JavaScript is single-threaded, meaning it can only do one thing at a time. If JavaScript executes one task at a time, how does it handle things like network requests, timers like set timeout, and user interactions like clicks and key presses? If these tasks were blocking, your browser would freeze until they completed. And this is where the event loop comes in. It allows JavaScript to offload certain tasks to the system kernel, which is typically multi-threaded. The kernel can then handle these tasks asynchronously on separate threads in the background without blocking the main thread. And this is what allows JavaScript to perform non-blocking I.O. operations. I'm going to deep dive into JavaScript's runtime model based on the event loop, which is very different from models in other languages like C and Java. First, let's understand how the JavaScript runtime environment works. Think of the runtime as a factory. Inside this factory, three key systems work together. The call stack handles your synchronous code. The heap is the memory pool where objects and dynamically allocated variables or data are stored and queues manage asynchronous tasks. The event loop is the manager that coordinates these three components and ensures that tasks are handled in the correct order. Think of the call stack as a worker on an assembly line. It takes tasks, completes them, and moves on to the next one. Every time you call a function, it's added or pushed to the stack. The stack can only run one task at a time, and there's no exceptions. In this example, greet is added to the stack, hello gets logged, greet is removed from the stack, and then world is logged next. The call stack works great for synchronous code, but what happens if we need to wait for something, like a timer or data fetch? This is where web APIs come in, and I like to think of this as the offload zone. JavaScript's web APIs, or Node.js APIs, handle tasks that would otherwise block the main thread. When you call set timeout, fetch, or listen for DOM events, the call stack sends that task to the web APIs, and these APIs work in the background, once they're done, they notify JavaScript that the result is ready. Many web API functions, especially those dealing with I.O. like network requests or file system operations, interact with the operating system's kernel that can handle these operations concurrently. In this example, start gets logged immediately. Set timeout is offloaded to the web API and does not block the call stack. And then end gets logged immediately. After two seconds, the timer's callback is added to the callback queue, which I will explain, and then waits for its turn. The important part here is that the timer does not pause the call stack. It gets handled in the background, outside of the main thread. Now we have the callback queue, which is tasks waiting to return. Once the web API finishes its job, for example, set timeout expires, it places the callback in the callback queue. So when a web API function is called, it initiates the asynchronous operation and then registers a callback function. The web API handles the operation in the background, often involving the kernel. And once the operation is complete, the callback function is placed in the task queue or the callback queue. The event loop then checks, hey, is the call stack empty? If yes, it takes the next task from the callback queue and moves it to the stack for execution. If you are interested in taking your software engineering skills to the next level, I would encourage you to build projects. I'm not talking about going down the rabbit hole of tutorial hell and building a to-do list, calculator, or weather app. I'm talking about building complex real-world projects beyond the basics. And this is where CodeCrafters comes in. This platform provides interactive tools to build developer tooling from scratch. There are a number of courses that teach building Git from scratch, building an in-memory Redis database, an HTTP web server, your own Docker, your own DNS server, and many others. I personally love that there is built-in support for over 20 different languages. My favorite, of course, is Golang, but I would highly recommend trying a newer language like Zig as well. I'm excited to announce that I'm partnering with CodeCrafters to offer all my viewers 40% off. For more details, you can find a link in the description down below as well as the pinned comment. But there's two kinds of queues. We have the callback queue, which is the normal queue, and then we have the microtask queue, which you can think of as the VIP line. The microtask queue has higher priority than the callback queue. Promise callbacks like dot then, dot catch, and dot finally, as well as queue microtasks are examples of microtasks. And microtasks are handled before all callbacks, even if they were scheduled later. And just a reminder that a promise is like a placeholder for a future result, and it represents the eventual outcome of some asynchronous operation. It has three possible states, pending, fulfilled, and rejected. You use dot then when the task is successful or fulfilled, and you use dot catch if the task fails or is rejected. So a promise says, I'll get back to you with the result of fetching this data later. And when I do, I'll either give you the data or tell you what went wrong. And these callbacks that handle the result are scheduled on the microtask queue. In this example, start gets logged immediately, 
set timeout goes to the web API, the promise dot then callback goes to the microtask queue, the end is logged immediately. And then the microtask queue or promise callback runs before the callback queue or set timeout callback. So the event loop is really the factory manager that manages all these components. But why do we call the event loop the event loop? It's called the event loop because it constantly cycles between these components. It first checks the call stack. If it's empty, it checks the microtask queue and runs all microtasks. And then it checks the callback queue and runs the next callback. The event loop ensures that JavaScript never starts a new task until the current one finishes. And this is known as the run to completion semantic. It's a nice property that allows you to reason about your program. When a function runs, it cannot be preempted and will run entirely before any other code runs. This differs from C, where if a function runs in a thread, it may be stopped at any point by the runtime system to run some other code in another thread. The event loop is what orchestrates everything and ensures JavaScript remains non-blocking and efficient. If you learned something new today, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content like this. As always, thank you very much for watching this video and happy coding.